Chapter 4. Decision Aids Decision aids are carefully developed tools for people facing tough health care and social choices. Decision aids help people understand their options, sort out their values and preferences, and participate in a process of shared decision-making with clinicians. Hi, my name is Pat Deegan. In this video, we will learn what decision aids are. We will also take a tour of decision aids that your team can use when working with young folks experiencing psychosis and their families. We can't possibly cover every decision aid in this short video, so be sure to consult your viewer's guide for additional tips and resources. It's important to understand that decision aids and shared decision making are not the same thing. Shared decision making is a broader concept. It's possible to do shared decision making without a decision aid. Decision aids, on the other hand, are tools that can help people prepare to participate in shared decision making. Decision aids are adjuncts and are not meant to replace the important conversations that individuals have with clinicians. Decision aids usually have three core elements. First, they have up-to-date information about the choice an individual is facing, including options and benefits and risks of those options. Secondly, decision aids also typically have values clarification exercises that help individuals sort out what matters and how various options may impact quality of life. And finally, decision aids typically offer guidance for deliberation. For instance, some decision aids have balanced first-person narratives or videos. Others have a place to request more information, request input from family members, decisional leaning scales, interactive exercises, and the like. Decision aids come in many formats, including simple pen and paper tools, video formats with worksheets, issue cards, board games, websites, and web applications. Importantly, decision aids are not and should never be developed by industry. It's important that they are free of marketing bias. The International Patient Decision Aid Standards Collaboration, called IPDAS for short, develops standards for decision aid development and offers clear guidelines for evaluation of them. Here you can find an A to Z listing of decision aids. Let's select one under Mental Disorders. This one is called Antipsychotic Medicines for Children and Teens, a review of the research for parents and caregivers. Here you have a good summary of the decision aid. Here is a list of the medication options it presents. It was developed by AHRQ, or the Federal Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. It comes in a variety of formats, including the web, PDF, and audio. Note that this decision aid is also available in Spanish and English. And finally, you can see how it scores on IPDAS standards here. A convenient hyperlink is provided directly to the decision aid. Be sure to explore this site as you gather decision aids for use with young people and families served by your team. Decision aids can be used in three important ways. They can be used directly in the consultation. Secondly, they can be used outside of the consultation by individuals and families in an effort to get prepared for shared decision making. And finally, decision aids can be used in novel, socially mediated situations such as telephonic health coaching, peer-to-peer -peer online sites, health navigators, and the like. The first two options, decision aids for use within the consultation and prior to the consultation, are most relevant for teams working with young folks with psychosis. Now we'll look at two types of decision aids that have been carefully crafted for use within a consultation. These decision aids work like scaffolding to support a shared decision-making conversation during actual face-to-face -face consultations. The first is the option grid for employment. The option grid for employment is meant to be used when people face a decision about returning to work. 
In the first column are frequently asked questions such as, does being at work make a difference to my health? In the second column is an evidence-based answer for the option of staying out of work. In the third column is an evidence-based answer for the option of going back to work with support from an employment counselor. You can just imagine how helpful this decision aid would be if you were working with a young person and or family who felt uncertain about return to work after a diagnosis of psychosis. The second type of decision aid created specifically for use within a consultation are issue cards. These are developed by the Mayo Clinic Shared Decision Making National Resource Center and are available for free. Two sets of issue cards may be especially helpful for teams serving folks with early psychosis. The first is the diabetes medicine decision aid, and the second is the depression medication choice. Here's how they work. Imagine that a practitioner and individual have decided in favor of a trial on an antidepressant. However, now the individual faces a decision about which one to use. Using the depression medication choice decision aid, the practitioner would hold up the cards and ask which issue might be a top concern in choosing an antidepressant. Weight change? Approach to stopping? Sleep? Cost? Or sexual issues? The individual might select the weight change card. Scanning the card, it's obvious that desvenlafaxine is weight neutral when compared to some of the other antidepressants. Next, the individual would select a second card. This time, it's the sexual issues card. As you can see, desvenlafaxine may result in mildly lowered libido, making the individual less enthusiastic about this option. And so the process would continue. Can you see how this decision aid is very engaging? It's all about the conversation and is not meant to replace the consultation. Instead, the decision aid acts as scaffolding to support a deeper conversation between the individual, the family, and the practitioner. In your viewer's guide, you will find hyperlinks to videos of practitioners using the issue cards in practice. A second category of decision aids are those that can be used prior to the meeting with the clinician. They allow individuals and families to prepare to participate in shared decision-making during the consultation. Remember, never just hand a decision aid to someone. Always remind people to review the decision aid and to return for the next appointment to talk things over. Examples of these types of decision aids include those developed by AHRQ. We have listed additional AHRQ decision aids in your viewer's guide. The Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration has also developed a decision aid for choice of treatment for psychosis. This is a web-based decision aid with lots of interactive exercises and videos. More information about this decision aid can be found in your viewer's guide. Decision making is not just a rational process. Sorting through our emotions and being able to imagine various futures for ourselves is a critical part of decision-making. Toward this end, first-person narratives can be very helpful. One great place to find first-person accounts of psychosis and recovery is at the Center for Practice Innovations website. Here you'll find hope-filled, three-minute videos from young people in recovery from early psychosis and their families. Recoverylibrary.com is a site I put together. It has hundreds of videos of individuals describing their recovery from mental illness, physical health conditions, and addiction. It also has lots of practical recovery tools. A fascinating site is called Health Talk. It's a very reliable resource out of the UK. Of particular note is an entire section on young people's experiences. Here is a section on eating disorders. Here's a section on cannabis use and mental health conditions. And finally, 
some good videos from young people with psychosis. I hope you're feeling encouraged by these wonderful decision aids. Of course, there will never be a decision aid for every tough choice that people face. Because of this, the more generic decisional balance worksheet has been developed. There's a version for use with individuals and another for use with individuals and families together. These are self-explanatory and a demonstration video is available from your viewer's guide along with a self-quiz, discussion questions, and links to more resources. We live in exciting times where the dream of truly person-centered, recovery-oriented care can become a reality. You can be part of making that dream come true by effectively involving folks in the use of decision aids and shared decision-making. This is Pat Deegan. Thanks for listening.